In this video, we're going to be learning about the LRU cache provided by Funk Tools. And LRU stands for least recently used. So this is the least recently used cache. And all it does is memoize a callable, not memorize, but memoize, which means you save the result of a certain function call so that the next time you do that exact same function call with the same arguments, you will already have the result there. So you just have to grab the result if you already made that function call once. All it's doing is caching the result from a function call that you already performed. So this can lead to a huge performance boost in your program. And I put 100 times in the title, but it can be indefinitely faster than that. Anyway, let's get started with an example which I ripped right from the Python documentation. And this is a function that counts the vowels from any given sentence, which will be of type string. And of course, it should return to us an integer of the amount of vowels inside a sentence. And the implementation is going to look like this. It's going to return the sum for the sentence dot count with the vowel inserted for the vowel in, in this string, which contains all the vowels. So right now, if we were to use this function on something such as hello world, and we were to run that, we would get three as a return. And if we were to use this several times on the same string, we would get the same result back each time. The only problem with this approach is that each time we use this function, we're performing a fresh calculation, which can easily consume our resources very quickly. I know this is a very basic example, but a good place to see this in action is with Fibonacci or some other intense calculations. We do not want to perform the same calculation over and over for something that we already computed once. So let's take a look at how we can optimize this by caching the result. And to do so, we're going to use LRU cache, which has two optional arguments. One is the max size, which by default is set to 128. And the second one is typed. And I'll explain what type does in just a moment. But for now, we're just going to insert max size with the default, just to show you that that is the default. And with typed, set to false, which is also the default. So you can exclude these if you want, but I just want to show you that these exist. Next, we're going to create a function that will time how long it takes to execute this function 1 million times. So what I'm going to use here is this main function. And inside this main function, I have a variable called sentences, which contains a list of type string, and it contains these three sentences. Now for each sentence in these sentences, I'm going to use this function 1 million times with that given sentence. So we're actually performing 3 million function calls. But thanks to LRU cache, we're only going to be using this function three times. The rest of the times, we're just going to immediately return the result. But let's also measure the time it takes to execute the main function. And I've created a helper method. The implementation is not important. All it does is use the default performance counter to calculate the start time and the end time. And then we get the difference, and that's going to give us the total time it took to execute this function. And this is actually a decorator. So to measure it, I'm just going to add this decorator. But next, inside our if name is equal to main check, we can just run the main function to see how long it actually took to execute this code. And if we were to run that, we're going to get 122 milliseconds back. If we run it again, we're always going to get a result that's quite similar to that time frame. But let's see what happens if we were to exclude the LRU cache. So if we were to comment that out and we were to rerun the script, you'll see that it's going to take significantly longer. It took nearly three seconds to execute our script. And that's because every single time we referred to count values or we called count values, it performed a fresh new calculation, which is a huge waste of resources, especially if we have some values that we're calling over and over and over again. The arguments remained the same for each function call. So why should we even waste our time with performing a fresh calculation? And the answer is we shouldn't. We should just return the pre-computed result. But let's go back up and here I'm just going to uncomment that because I want to show you a few methods that you can use with LRU cache or actually functions that use LRU cache to either clear the cache or to get information regarding the cache. So one that's quite important is cache info. So right here we can print our count values function, which uses the LRU cache decorator, and we can type in dot cache underscore info. 
And if we run this now, we're going to get some information regarding the cache for that particular function. The first one tells us how many times we were able to use the cache. So for 2,999,997 times, we were able to use the cached result. And misses refers to the amount of times we had to perform the fresh calculation. So we only computed our values three times, which makes sense because each time we inserted a new argument such as hello world, or I don't know, must be a king, or we are three wise men. These are all new arguments to our function call. So we of course had to perform a fresh calculation, but with the rest of the times we could use the cached result. And then we have max size, which refers to the total cache size. So the amount of results we want to save. And then we have the current size, which refers to how many results we have currently cached in our cache. So cache info gives us a lot of good information regarding our current cache state. Also, in case your cache is getting too big or you don't want to keep it anymore, you can use another method that comes with LRU cache, and that is the cache underscore clear method. So we're going to call that, and then I'm just going to copy the line from above and paste it directly under. And if we run that now, you'll see that the first cache info is going to contain a valid cache with all the information. And once we clear it, we can effectively see that our cache has been cleared. So it's not going to contain the hits anymore or the misses or the current size because now the cache has been cleared. But there are still a few questions such as what does typed do? What is the point of typed? Well, theoretically, let's pretend you have a function called add and it takes a number as an argument. So maybe 10. If you have typed set to true, it's going to consider 10 and 10.0 as different types. So those will end up being considered as distinct calls with distinct caches, instead of just having one cache for that result. Also, another thing to mention is that since LRU cache uses a dictionary to store the results, the keyword arguments and the positional arguments must be hashable. And on top of that, if you have a function that takes keyword arguments, if you were to pass in a keyword argument of A, with 10 and B with, let's say 20, the order of these can lead to distinct caches. So if you were to place B in front of A, this can be considered a complete different call than the previous one, even if the arguments are exactly the same. Anyway, let's take a look at one more example using the Fibonacci sequence, because that's a good place to show you the massive power of LRU cache. So let's get rid of everything here and everything inside main for now, because we will just replace that with the Fibonacci sequence. And I'm also going to remove this part here. So the next function, which I stole from the Python documentation is going to be this Fibonacci sequence. And this time we're going to have max size set to none. And all that means is that we do not have a cache limit, which means it can easily exceed 128 results. Anyway, going back to our Fibonacci function, as a lot of you probably know by now, if you put a high number into this function, it's going to take ages to load if we do not cache the result. And actually this time, I'm going to save the cache for later because I want to show you how much faster it is when we actually use the LRU cache. So in our main function, we're still measuring everything as normal. And I'm going to say Fibonacci with the value of 25, something small for now. And we can actually test this out by running it and that's going to take 12.18 milliseconds. And it might also be cool to print the result. So I'll go here and type in result of type integer is going to equal Fibonacci of 25, and we will print the result. So we can actually see that something happened. So if we run that, we're going to get this result from our Fibonacci sequence. If we put something in such as 28, it's going to take a bit longer. If we increase that to 40, it's going to even take longer and I don't know how long that's actually going to take. Maybe it will take 30 seconds. Maybe it will take a minute. I'm actually just going to stop the program now because it's taking far too long. So let's change that maybe down to something such as 30. And that took hundred milliseconds. Anyway, the point is that we are performing the same operation far too many times in our Fibonacci function, which also means that we're performing a lot of expensive operations for no reason. But now let's try to cache the results and see what happens when we run our script. You'll see that the execution is practically instant. It only took 0.03 milliseconds to perform this exact same calculation. And we can actually change that to 40 
and it's not going to affect our performance at all because we're effectively caching the results instead of making a fresh calculation for each function call. We can even set that to 200 and it only took eight milliseconds. It took almost no time to perform that calculation. And I'm not even going to show you what happens if I remove LRU cache for a number such as 200 in Fibonacci. I don't have the time for that. I'm going to be an old man by the time it returns a result, even if I'm performing this on a powerful computer. And something more interesting might actually be the cache info that we get back for the Fibonacci sequence. So if we were to just place that under here and we were to run our script, you'll see some of the information regarding our Fibonacci sequence. We performed a fresh calculation 198 times. We used a cache result 201 times. We have no max size, which means the cache can be as big as it wants, while the current size is set to 201. So that gave us back a lot of good information regarding the cache info for our Fibonacci function. Anyway, that just about covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I am going to leave the link to the documentation for this function or for the LRU cache in the description box down below. So you can take a closer look at it if you want to take some notes or if you want to find out some more particular details regarding its usage, you can find it in that link. Otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.